Christmas to you all, because it's Friday, which means once again we gather around the campfire in order to celebrate the stories that travel to and fro across the internet superhighway with anonymity and madness being the sole core for many reasons why people play games. And we are here to relish in those delights, to celebrate our purpose, to join together as one and become the people we need to be so we can watch out for these ruffians and these scallywags and these thugs that are out to ruin our online experience. But I have to tell you before we start, my true horrors just became realized. Apparently in a discussion that took place in my kid's school, a discussion was raised around games, video games to be exact, in which one of my sons offered a piece of information and that piece of information is that sometimes my daddy gets some games early and people ask him to look at them. His teacher, interested, pokes a curious eye over at my son and says, what is this? What is this? How does this happen? What things have occurred to allow such a situation? As it turns out, my son's teacher is very much into video games. To which he points out, my dad does things on the YouTubes. And in the middle of a classroom filled with eight-year-olds, they play one of my videos. Now, my kids have been forewarned that my videos are not for childish eyes. They're not for childish ears. And they're not to be witnessed in the classroom. Yet, before he could be stopped, the legacy of the priest was played. Now, thankfully, there was no swears or rotten words spoken. But it was immediately switched off, as the teacher quickly realized what they had walked into. And now, I believe, at the next parents' evening, I will have to contend with this situation, as the information will no doubt spread. And uh, for anybody who is a employee, or perhaps just simply the teacher of my kid's class. Hello. My kids were warned not to play this in front of you. Because someone might say, fuck our bugger. And now we're going to dive into some really weird things that people do online. Hello from everybody. We're glad to see you. Remember to subscribe. Thank you very much. Imagine when they discover you're now a genocider. Yep. <laughs> yep. What a week it has been. We have, in fact, done so much. No, only did we have a co-stream with Iflin, Warframe, a legend in his own right, taking me on a journey through Warframe, which we will now be expanding upon. I got a dog. That's right. And I refuse to kill the dog. The dog is considered poor quality loot, but I have a dog and the dog will stay by my side. He is my companion. We did our second level of preparation in Magic the Gathering Arena. And next week, I will be facing off against chess streamer Anna Crambling, who we don't know what she's planning. We checked. We looked. We don't know what she's planning. Conniving. Strategic. Mistrustful. We don't know. But we will be going one-on-one -on -one to see who can bring down the chess tornado. And not only that, we finished... Final Fantasy XIV, Heaven's Ward. It did come to a, an end. A tear was brought to the eye. It was an emotional journey as we traversed those waters of Heaven's Ward into what has easily made it into one of the top video game stories I have ever played, ever, in the history of video game stories. And I have played a goddamn lot of them in my tenure as a man holding a control pad. It was an experience, it was a journey, and it was very, very fun. Sad, happy, smiles, ridiculous, and all those kinds of things as we stepped foot into Stormblood and had the welcoming of a lifetime. Looking forward to it, but we've got bosses to kill before we get to that. We have stories in front of me. Prepared by our good lady Bex, she has prepared for us tales of woe, misery, happiness, and joy that we shall relish in together. Uh, I need to put two names into this as we look upon <laughs> our stories here, which uh, I'm told contain everything we need to wash down a Friday afternoon, and I'm sure we will have the best time ever. Uh, this story is entitled The Accidental Bull. That gets me worried because that, uh, that gives me all kinds of ideas about what this story might be about. <laughs> About what this story might be about. I don't know. The accidental bull. Uh, there's lots of references there to what a bull could be. <laughs> so I'm, sh I'm sure we'll be fine. Again, hello to my kids' teachers. 
Uh, hello to you. Okay, <laughs> let's have some fun, shall we? Greetings, preacher, and your wonderful, illustrious, and charming chat. I've been a listener for Drama Time for a past year or so through YouTube. And I get far too excited every time new stories appear in front of me. I sit there with some snacks, curl up, and listen to the horrors of online gaming. However, lately I've been thinking whether or not it's time I joined in the fray. As you can imagine, in my online dealings, I have been a part of the drama so far. The things I've been playing uh, will be retail World of Warcraft since the Burning Crusade. Sometimes just doing solo content if life gets too busy, or going into mythic raiding when life allows. And throughout the past 12 plus years, I've got a little handful of stories. But the one I present today is full of intrigue, romance, scandals, and a healer who flat out refuses to heal people because of their certain specs. I ask the chat to raise your gavels. Because I come to you, the courts of Preach Gaming. I need a decision. Am I guilty or am I innocent? Okay, so we, we, we've got judgments to make, team. We've got judgments to make. We will see how it flows. This particular tale begins towards the end of Warlord of Draenor, where we'd all AFK in our garrisons. In a little old country of New Zealand, I was in my early to mid-twenties at the time and still an avid World of Warcraft player. The guild I was in was a mix of Australians, New Zealanders, and Indonesian players raiding mythic Hellfire Citadel. Apparently, you're very guilty for being from New Zealand. So, there you go. <laughs> We'd been clearing bosses at a solid rate, and at the time, I was maining a Shadow Priest with my handy Resto Druid as my alt. There was a couple in the guild, and the girl of the couple hadn't spoken once on voice comms. But her partner would talk to us constantly on her behalf. She would pass messages to him for him to relay. One day, we're doing an attempt on Mythic Zulharak. Fucking kill me. And to our surprise... The girl spoke. And you have to realise, Preach and the chat, Australian and New Zealanders are interesting. We have no filter. I get into pug groups consistently and they see the server and then they groan at me. Only dickheads come from that group, from that realm. I'm not sure what you or your chat's experience is with Australian New Zealand people online, but it's the vibe that people get from us. So when this girl spoke, there was a pause. Going from constant communication and then a complete dead silence. After the silence, there was a huge moan from maybe f four or five guys. Oh yeah, it's a real girl. Etc. Etc. Et you can get the picture. We instantly wiped. A long story short, this one comment from a girl speaking once disbanded our entire guild shortly after. What? <laughs> Why? What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I didn't expect it to go that way. What? <laughs> <laughs> that's it that's that killed your guild so there i was me and about three or four irl friends who lived in the same city needing an see girls are toxic there's the proof right there it is in a nutshell <clears throat> so there i was me and about three or four irl friends who lived in the same city looking for a brand new guild legion was of course fast approaching we had read all about the Emerald Nightmare, finally going into the dreamscape. And frankly, we were excited as hell. So we did what of course we would do. Hey, friends, gather, hearken, hear my words. Let us create our own guild. One free of misogyny and happiness abound. Flowers will grow on the path we tread. And there it was. The beginning of a guild that still exists to this very day. Nobody logs into it, of course. But the guild te technically does still exist. A myriad of stories being forged during its lifetime. Oh, we need a guild name from the chat. What's the guild name of our utopia? What is our utopia to be called, my friends? What is our utopic Australian New Zealand Oceanic guild to be named? I, I, I need something. The sloppy guys against girls. Ah, grill. The crystal skippers. The boomerangs. Okay, yeah, we'll go with that. That seems thoroughly entrenched. 
That seems good. Our guild was named the Boomerangs. Great. Amazing. Easy. Now we just needed some recruits. Enter. Is this a name? Oh, you didn't put it in the name box, I don't think. Oh, no, you were right, Bex. Okay, I'm the moron. Uh, Where is this going, Bex? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the guild was called the Boomerangs. Great, amazing, easy, and now we just needed our recruits. And we turned to Tinder. I'm sure by now, even in your old ass age, fuck you, that you were aware of what Tinder is. Well, if you're not, I can give you my brief rundown. <laughs> Tinder is a dating app. Yes, we all know what Tinder is. There's nobody here who does not know what Tinder is. I'm single. I'm in my 20s in good old New Zealand and found me skulking through Tinder a lot. Swiping left, swiping right on whoever did or didn't tickle my fancy. But there on Tinder, someone intrigued me. Enter Zito. Her profile stated this. I like video games. I play World of Warcraft. Hey, 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 hey. I thought to myself, I should give this a try. Maybe I'll see if we click. We have WoW in common. What else is there? And so I swiped right, my friends. The conversation began. I found out she played a Mistweaver, Pandaren and Monk, so she'd be useless in group play. But I skipped it over. She invited me over to meet for the first time a couple of days later. As you can imagine, we ended up sleeping together. The pillow talk was discussing relative passes and which mains we wanted. No, oh, this this is. <laughs> oh god! After we slept together, the pillow talk discussed passes and what mains we wanted in the upcoming Legion expansion. I kid you not. Pretty hot stuff, as you can imagine. After this encounter, however, her demeanor changed a lot. She became well, crazy, for the lack of a better word. Immediately after the one time we had physically connected, she began panting like a dog, on purpose, with her hands in the air like a puppy. Again, to my kids' teachers. Hi. Um, now, I'm not kink-shaming or whatever. I'm not. But it was just, it just seemed insane. She got angry at me for not replying within five minutes to text message. Getting angry at me doing dungeons with anyone else that wasn't her. I even went to take a shit once. I got chatting to my flatmates afterwards. And when I returned 30 minutes later, she was crying, thinking I was ignoring her. You know what? I've been there. I have been there. It's very weird. My w <laughs> You know, it, take it took me. When I was at university... At the, the prestigious University of Manchester. It would take me approximately 15 minutes to walk from my flat to the train station in order to get the train into the city to go to university. I once received 24 text messages on that journey because my phone was in my bag and I didn't feel it vibrating or whatever. So when I got to the train station to whip out my phone, I had 24 text messages. And the latest ones did include, why are you not replying? You definitely are awake. You're going to class. Why are you not replying? Etc, etc. And uh, yeah, that did not last long. Legion came out. And we had been busy recruiting. Sometime prior to the initial launch, I had called anything romantic sexual off. It was just too much. But I enjoyed playing with her. Her passes were pretty good. We had recruited a bunch of Australians for the guild who were all amazing. Will absolutely be, and some of them will absolutely be listening to this story. One of them got me hooked on drama time. Who is it? <laughs> who is it? However, it was such a chaotic bunch of people. As Zito had actually brought over one of her old guildies to ours as well. Adam. For the life of me, I can't recall what class Adam was. He's one of the people who will switch characters every patch and have every alt. But I believe it was an elemental sh an elemental shaman at the time. He was a cool guy. Easy to make fun of, but everyone in the guild was like this. He got mad a few times for everyone poking fun, but overall a decent player. His passes were above 90% most of the time, and he was knowledgeable. A great asset to the guild, along with Zito and her quality heals. Emerald Nightmare, though. Well, that was a fucking disaster. The lack of leadership was our biggest hurdle. 
Everyone was getting mad at everybody else. Loot was fucked. Please, for the love of God, bring back Master Looter. The New Zealand-Australian time difference were making it difficult to get a cohesive time going. And a surrender to madness meta existed. However, something came to our attention during this time. And it turns out that Zito and Adam were actually a couple. They were dating. At this stage, I'd become close with Adam. We'd used to do content together, chat and everything. He lived in Australia while myself and Zito lived in New Zealand. A long distance relationship then. Cool. They could make it work. Why should I care? That'd be cool. They do things together a lot and seem to know each other extremely well. Fine. After a raid one night, I suddenly get that clink clink. Something in the pink. Dude. 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 Can you, uh... Drop into the Discord for a minute. Need to have words. Sure, man. Give me five. Now, I don't remember the exact specifics of the conversation. But I remember the gist. And I'll try and recount it to you. He started simple enough. Mate. You dated Zito, right? He's really hard to be with, you know? It's tough to date. They've been on and off for a long time, actually, and were generally more friends. That's how she introduced them both to the guild as a whole, just as friends. He was asking me for advice on relationships. The guild knew I had dated a fair couple of few people. I'd assumed he wanted advice because of this. No, 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 no. I want to talk to you, mate. Because you and Zito specifically have been together before. And I replied. I, I mean... I guess it was just once and it was like ages ago, but you know, I mean, technically, yes, I guess. Just silent for a few seconds. And then Adam says something very strange to me. All right. I don't think you're a bad person or anything. I just didn't know you would do that. I was confused. Why would sleeping with someone make me a bad person exactly? But just after I said that, the pieces lined up in my head. And he articulates what I've put together. Well, you're the one who made a cheat on me, right? And it turns out that Zito was actually dating Adam at the time that she was strolling through Tinder. And I'd obviously failed to mention that she had a boyfriend at the time. Um, right. Uh, I, she never told me she was dating anyone. Uh, we literally just met on, Twitter, on Tinder. That's it. Seemed more heartbroken. That she didn't mention their relationship rather than me. You know. And next came the line. This line that lived on in infamy among the guild ever since. The others found out about it and it has not stopped to this day. Just want you to know, if anyone had ever slept with my girlfriend, I'm glad it was you. I don't recall how I responded. <laughs> Probably something nice, so I just brushed it off. But before I knew it, there was alts joining the guild called I'm glad it was you. With every variation of those letters. Officer and guild notes were starting to get changed. People would drop that line into seemingly normal conversations with Adam. If anybody was to take my snicker bar, I'm glad it was you, Adam. Throughout all of this, I felt like a bad person because... Dumbass Adam didn't seem to realize how much people were mocking him. I was the home wrecker. The titles were forthcoming, and I probably had more titles from this than my actual character in World of Warcraft. <coughs> the tension that this arose eventually dissipated when Zito left the guild after getting into an argument with everyone that stemmed from her quite literally sitting with... <laughs> Zito left the guild after getting into an argument with everyone that stemmed from her quite literally sitting down in the middle of a boss fight and refusing to heal our brewmaster... Because she doesn't like that she can't top him off. <laughs> Obviously referring to stagger mechanic, not his penis. It was an absolute clusterfuck. Without going into too much more detail, Preacher, during the same period in the boomerangs, there was also a scandal of a married hunter in the guild sleeping with a priest. Our paladin tank and our demon hunter are all living in the same city. 
along with a drunken argument from two raiders with opposing political views, communism and fascism. Oh, good choices. <laughs> name changes from being teased, forced name changes from Blizzard due to bad words, dogs and mock dogs making and falling in pools, Snapchats of scrotums being sent for giggles during raids. <laughs> That's always a laugh. <laughs> That's always a laugh. Come on now. Come on now. We've all done that. And a screaming match over a cloak in Nighthold. Maybe one day I'll send in more stories to cover these little ones. Let's see how it goes. But my question, Preacher. I don't believe I am guilty. But some of my friends genuinely believe I did a bad thing because I did sleep with another man's woman. Am I guilty? Hmm. Um. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. Innocent. If everything you're saying is accurate. Right? I want to talk to the guildies. The guildies are in the chat. Oh, they're watching it on YouTube. The guildies. I want the follow-up story from the guildies. That's what I want. If it's accurate, then we will declare you innocent. I haven't got my gavel. It's fallen down the back of my desk. I haven't got the gavel. <coughs> Guildies, who are here? We wish to know the truth. Is it accurate? Is the story told the way it goes? She's the guilty one? I mean, panting like a puppy dog. That's a Christmas miracle. That's, uh, that's a whole thing <laughs> that's going on there. I don't know how you respond to that. He's a victim. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. Uh, yeah, it sounds messy, but I mean, hmm. I don't blame you for going on Tinder and seeing someone mention World of Warcraft and going, "Well, that's worth a shot." I don't blame the open. In fact, I don't blame. I don't blame any uh, any road that was open here. I really don't. <laughs> no, Riga is where things get real. Okay, sure. Fuck that dungeon. Fuck this dungeon. Worst dungeon in World of Warcraft by Miles. Absolute worst dungeon. I'm glad it was you. Uh, so glad it's you. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Put it on me. <laughs> put it on me for sure. Okay, this is where things get real, apparently. <sighs> Hello, Preacher! I'm writing to you from the two-year break from World of Warcraft that is the Shadowlands. I hope that post-wildlife is treating you well. Not bad, actually. Not bad. With all the free time I found in my post-wild schedule, I've finally gotten around to sharing a drama store with you. Oh, Shadowlands paid off somehow. Nice. With you, uh, that has been on my mind for several years now. Let me set the scene for you, buddy. Throughout Wrath of the Lich King, I had played a Blood Elf Shadow Priest. And I have to say, it was the most fun the game has ever been. Highest overall damage in my raid, survivability that allowed me to ignore many mechanics, and the ability to heal when needed. I even healed the timed uh, Culling of Strathom Drake run back when it was, you know, <laughs> a thing. <laughs> then came the Cataclysm. My guild broke up in Blackwing Descent and I was unhappy with the changes they had made to Shadow Priest. Mostly the removal of vampiric, passive Vampiric Touch. The ability which had made it so that DPS harder was a viable solution to many mechanics. So I went back to the Alliance and back to my warrior I had played since vanilla for the remainder of the Cataclysm. And all was well with the world. A few years later, though, it was panda time. I thought the new glyph of Shadow Ravens looked so cool. Oh, do you remember? And it made me nostalgic for my time as a Shadow Priest. So I decided I'll make an Alliance one. And it was fun. It was. Well, not as fun as the Wrath version. I was in full heirlooms with full twink enchants, though, so the feeling of being an OP god was still present, at least while I was leveling. Now, back in those days, you had to be level 30 for dual spec, but it wasn't a problem. I had done plenty of shadow healing in my day, so when I queued up for a dungeon, I hit both the damage and healing rolls. I would then do whichever was assigned to me, and it worked well. And I had gotten to be level 28 and completed every single dungeon that I had been in without problem. But then comes Normagon. I queue up. I hit damage and healing like a good player. And a few moments later, that queue pops up telling me I'm going to be doing some healing. No sweat. I zone in, buff the group, and then sit down to drink. The other four immediately jump from the ledge, <laughs> miss the gear, lose 80% of their life from the fall, 
I grow the first boss and die. <laughs> oh, the memories. Ah, the memories. <sighs> I jump down onto the gear and throw the res. And as you can probably imagine, the chorus began, Mate, where's the heels though? Where was you? I start trying to explain that you missed the jump, guys. I couldn't get them in time before you pulled the boss. Oh, I found it. I know what's up. Check it out, lads. It's noob's shadow. Shadow low. Shadow's a damaged spec, brother. Guys, it's fine. We don't get dual spec for another couple of levels. I've healed every single dungeon up until this point. A shadow. It's fine. Don't worry about it. This isn't Wailing Caverns or Dead Mines, mate. Don't you know that dungeons take a massive difficulty spike at Nomagon? This is where shit gets real now. This is proper players. <laughs> okay. <laughs> After I finished laughing, I said, guys, guys, it's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine. I have shadow healed plenty of heroics before. I can handle this place. If you like, well, mate, 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 you is bullshit. You is mad bullshit. You know why I know? You know why I know, though? Level 28s can't do heroics, though, can they, mate? Fucking dumb you, mate. Didn't think I'd cock it, did you? I'm not a noob. Not a noob, mate. Level 28s can't even do heroics. Fucking shit you, mate. I know. I know. I have another character. This is just an ult. Liar, mate. Why would anyone make two priests, though? Right? That don't even make sense, though, does it, mate? Fucking noob you, mate. What'd you do? What'd you do? Watch a stream and think you missed a fucking goody shoe shoes or whatever. Fucking shit you, mate. Two priests. Two priests? Mr. Fucking Tommy Two Priests? Don't think so, brother. I guess he has me there. I mean... Why Why would anyone break two priests? What kind of idiot would have two priests? They then threaten to kick me. And I tell them, I'm in full heirlooms. I'm so overgeared, brother. I'm so good. There's no way whoever replaces me will be anywhere near as good, regardless of whatever spec they are. Maybe. Maybe. You haven't even got plus healing on your staff, though. You've got plus spell damage. You don't even know how to play your character. Fucking noob. At this point, I'm at loss for words. <laughs> I really don't know whether to laugh or cry. Then the tank speaks up. Tell you what. I'm in charge of this group. I'll give you one chance. If you can keep me up, you can stay. <laughs> We jump down and kill the boss without any problems at all. We get to the long hallway leading towards the hangar, and I notice that the tank isn't stopping. He is pulling the entire hallway in one single go. This is not the sort of behavior that I would expect from someone who apparently doesn't trust his healer. And especially one who is apparently doing the dungeon where things get real. It takes a bit of spamming, though, but he doesn't die. With full heirlooms, I'm so overpowered, I can get it done. But there is maybe one problem. See, our boy, our tank hero right here, doesn't have any heirlooms. He's lower level than the rest of the party, and he can't out-threat my heals. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so after not too long, I find myself face-tanking four full groups of angry leper gnomes and mechano striders. We make a good go of it, but the tank never, ever gets aggro back off me, as I'm having to spam heal myself now at this point. And eventually I die. The rest of the party, of course, soon follows. The last thing I see before the loading screen is you have been removed from the group. Oh, from the, <laughs> the last thing I see before the loading screen in the old classic, you have been removed from the group, is fucking noob healer, mate! Can't even heal himself! Lols! At this point, I'm just pissed. I'm pissed. I fly out of the mountains of Dunborough and talk to the zone entrance and solo the dungeon. Heirlooms with full twink enchants were so, so overpowered. I knew they were overpowered. I did it on my own. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what lesson I learned that day. No more gone. That is where shit gets real. And I've never done that dungeon since. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm never going back. <laughs> That's it. 
It's off the menu, boys. I don't care what how good it is. I don't care if it gives me all the way to level cap. I am never going back. I am never going back there in my entire life. True. I, I mean, I don't think I've been back ever. But I haven't leveled a character in my fucking forever. Okay. Uh, what do we got here? Hmm. <laughs> Those dungeon groups are crazy. The worst are people. I saw a dungeon group for Scarlet Monastery fall apart while waiting for somebody else to get there because someone had the whirlwind sword instead of the whirlwind axe, and therefore it, it was it was assumed that person was so bad that the dungeon couldn't possibly succeed. I just witnessed this conversation happening in party chat about how bad that person must be. And then they inspected talents, the whole thing. Oh, they're, they're not elitists. Like, not good ones, anyway. They're half-knowledgeable elitists. They know the so little information, such as, you should take the axe. They know that part. That's it. They don't know why. They have no idea why. They just think you should take the axe. And if you don't, then you're bad. You're bad. Half-knowledgeable elitists are the absolute worst. They're the kind of people to read a graph and just have it upside down and draw conclusions. Oh, God, do we need the jury again? <laughs> okay. Hello, preacher. It's your heartless jury. Oh, that's offensive. Your heartless jury. I know how much you love a good old RP story, and this one I feel some of you might relate to, in fact. At least initially. Okay. I relate. I have never heard an RP story that I've related to. I'll be honest with you. Not a single time. So let's see what you've got for us, shall we? Let me take you back. Oh, it's another wild one. Way, way back to the late days. Get your Final Fantasy stories in. I want them. I want them. Back to the late days of the Cataclysm. And just before Mists of Pandaland released. I'll preface things by saying that I wasn't aware that my realm of choice was a roleplay realm. I had no idea. And much less did I know what that even meant at the time when I began playing World of Warcraft. No drama in FF. Okay, copium overload. Copium overload, aisle three. Someone, someone come and clean this up. After all, I was just a young boy when I started. I only chose Wormrest Accord North America because it's where my friend played. I made my way into a few LFR raids over the duration of Kata, and much to my dismay was horribly aware that my computer... Oh no, he's got a shit computer. This is worse than anything. Was incapable of handling raiding on any level. <laughs> oh no. Up until this point in my story, I was in a cool guild. That's in quotations, I don't know why. That my friend ran. One that had approximately four players in it. Who all knew each other in real life. Needless to say, I had no idea what a real guild was. Or how a guild was actually supposed to function. Soon after I started, uh, soon after I started, my friend, as is tradition, stopped playing, and I eventually realised that things were quite lonely without anyone to play an MMO with. So I began the hunt for another guild where one might initially begin any search. As a young boy going through puberty tends to be, I was an expert with the Google machine. So I went to Google and typed how to find a guild. <laughs> I was bombarded with a plethora of various ways to go about doing so. This is cute. And I latched. I latched onto the one that seemed the smartest to me at first. Which, of course, was the WoW Guild Recruitment Forums. Perfect. I thought to myself that it seems simple enough. Scroll through the guilds that are looking for players or just set up a post where you say you are. But I had no real idea what I was after. What do I want? And the posts were full of abbreviations and acronyms that were hard to understand. What does HC mean? What is MWF, item level? The post titles all seemed to be like written in different languages, like some JavaScript. And I was too young and naive to understand the jargon. So, I dispensed with that idea. And I moved on to the next recommended idea from Google search. Which was trade chat channels. So I thought, okay, we'll go with the number two. Can't be that bad. I hopped in game and sat myself in Stormwind. In those days, the chat was filled with guilds recruiting, people looking for raids, LFW merchants and trolls alike. It was the grand era of the anal dirge. <laughs> it was prime real estate for what I was after. 
So I began sifting through the various guild recruitment posts and talking to recruiters. Most of them asking me questions that I didn't understand. I could quickly moved on when they realized that I was a casual. But there were a few kind people out there. And they just wanted to have conversations with me. With some, it was as if, as if I was talking to an NPC at times, the way they spoke. I thought it was pretty strange, but I didn't think much of it. There was one recruiter in particular who piqued my interest. A woman by the name of Saint. Who seemed intrigued by the fact that I had chosen to play a paladin. And was very interested in getting me into her guild. Her words were smooth, but at times dark. The air was crisp with a sort of effortless seduction. She was a warlock. And I'd seen their pets, so I, being a 16-year-old, naturally envisioned her as a succubus. <laughs> like Kanye West, she was my twisted fantasy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think I'm too boomer for that. <laughs> Kanye West, she was my twisted fantasy. <laughs> Naturally, I, I think I'm too boomer for that. <laughs> I've done this. Thank you so much, bro. Long time, friend. Simply put, I'd follow her anywhere she asked me to. I was horny and bewitched. I couldn't see the red flags for the clearly succubus image that was in my mind. Succubuses aren't supposed to be attractive, though. Like, really? Like, in fantasy world, yeah. But not really, right? They're demons, dude. Okay? You know what I'm saying? Demons are hot. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. I was introduced to role play accidentally. I swear. I swear to you now. It was a pure accident. By now, I'm sure your jury is having a field day with me. They're, they're talking about spunk demons. Don't worry about it. I can hear it now, as if he didn't know what was going to happen here. I assure you, as embarrassing as it is, I was young and dumb. And if you'll think back to your younger days, I'm sure you could start to understand the level of sheer naivety that encompassed me better. Dude, I once thought I genuinely had a chance with my high school teacher. I, I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I was convinced. Oh, there was a good few weeks period there. I was totally convinced. Totally convinced of that. Uh, probably because she spoke to me as my teacher. Yeah. <laughs> probably because she spoke to me. Back to the story, though. It wasn't until I received a whisper from Saint in parentheses. What is your character's backstory, though? That I realized that something was strange. Backstory? I don't have a backstory. I bought a WoW account. Is that my backstory? I didn't give any of this much thought. But she was my goddess. And it seemed important to her. So I googled. Paladin backstories. <laughs> Where are... <laughs> the light. Yep. That's it. <clears throat> I am a paladin who serves the light. My character is a warrior of light. And although I was a little more detailed than that, but not much, no one who I'd ever been involved in RP would read what I'd written and believe a word I'd said. I was clearly a clueless idiot. <laughs> and I had been exposed. When I was asked to do an in-character interview, I knew I was fucked. I had a few hours to flesh out a more robust story. Make things more believable. Otherwise, there was no way they'd let me in. And no chance in hell that I would get to spend any more time with that illustrious saint. I took the time to do a little research, Google some more information. I knew a bit from a book I'd read, read once about WoW, and I slammed together a quality story. The interview was the beginning of a long, wild ride. But it was another red flag I should have paid more attention to. So it's worth mentioning to you now. Oh god, what is this? When I ran into the tavern that my interview was supposed to take place in, I didn't know that I should have walked. So my character, which I had named Savage, 
appeared to have flown into the tavern and jogged up the stairs in the back to where Saint was seated at a table with a male human sitting on the floor beside her. Not wearing any armor. Oh. Oh no. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. There was a naked man sat on the floor next to a seductively RP-dressed warlock. And he's 16. Man, you're in for a good time. She began typing in slashy and using that to communicate. Saint takes a sip from her glass and looks up to see the shaggy paladin who's just burst into the tavern looming over her. You must be savage, she says, placing her glass back on the table. Would you like to sit, or are you just going to stand? We have matters to discuss. I had no idea how she was making this shit appear in game. I don't know how to slash you. But I figured I'd respond in slash S since it was our characters talking. And she'd explained it very briefly before that this was to be in character. I'll spare you on the minutia as they're an important and mostly just rough translation from distant memories. But the naked man sitting beside her was her personal slave. And I come to find out later on that most of the guild was in fact enslaved or in some form of servitude to saint. The demon succubus. Well, oh, we need a guild name. Okay. All right. Control yourselves. We need a guild name for a roleplay guild that roleplays being enslaved to a succubus. Okay. No red flags yet. <laughs> the crawlers. <laughs> the crystal slaves. Yes. Perfect. The crystal slaves. Oh, I love that. Okay. The crystal slaves is perfect. <clears throat> they will also fall apart due to poor leadership. <clears throat> Savage joined the Crystal Slaves and spent many, many hours being RP'd as a personal bodyguard as well as being tortured in character in private by GM Saint. My character Savage was on a holy crusade to save her soul. Yes, I know. It's for RPers out there, yes, this is a dirty little white knight complex. <laughs> and she was <laughs> in and out of character, on, on an out of character crusade to pillage the spoils of a young naive boy. It's worth mentioning in a bit more detail about the players because it's important for the rest of the story that you understand the reality behind the curtain. Saint was married, a married middle-aged woman who was very aware of how old I was at the time. Her husband was also RPing with us. Oh, no. He regularly was the naked person on a leash following her around. It was a dirty dommy mommy kind of guild. We get that. We do. We do get that. And we get that. Yeah. The officers of the guild had their own strange kinks. A shy priestess who flip-flopped personalities behind the church. And a mysterious rogue. These characters had all pledged service to Saint for one reason or another. In character. But things weren't all in character in the, uh, in the Crystal Slaves. Now, as any good role player knows, there is one major rule you never break no matter what. Do you or your chat care to give it a guess? Uh, the only one I genuinely know, and this is all from drama time, is no god emoting. That's the only one I know. You don't, unless it's like an agreed upon rule, you don't god emote. Don't mix in character with out of character. Um, I mean, that happens regularly from what I say, is uh, from what I see, is that does happen. Like if, especially to keep things on rails and to make sure the story's going in the right direction. I'm, I'm pretty sure it was no god mowing, but we'll see anyway. The rule, of course, is usually unspoken, but it goes as followed. In character and out of... You, you guys are right. I don't even know why I try. In character and out of character should always remain separate. Period. Tying oneself to their character will always end in disaster. So it goes without saying that this is a line that you do not cross. That said, within the confines of the Crystal Slaves, the line was treated more like a train station. Everyone comes and goes across it as they please. And I'm ashamed to say I was no exception. But I beg the role players to give me mercy. I was practically still a child. You're 16. You're not a child. <laughs> That's not a child. 16, dude. <laughs> you're not a child. <laughs> Saint, however. I can't be like 16 and Saint. I'm just a kid. <laughs> no. Saint, however, was no such thing. Her character, admittedly much like mine, had become was merely a sporadic moment-to-moment -moment reflection of the player behind the keyboard. 
She toyed with the emotions of everyone in the guild, including herself, but no one more than me. Eventually, her tying was noticed to be more than an in-character endeavor by her husband. Oh, no. Who promptly requested that I join the two of them in a private voice com conversation. Her husband went apeshit at me. He ranted at me while she sat in silence being scolded as well. It feels nasty to even think of it, but I liked being a plaything at the time. What young boy doesn't want to enjoy that sort of thing, even just a little bit? When the conversation was over, much to my surprise, I was not kicked from the guild. But looking back, I think it may have been in part to the fact that Saint was clearly in charge of this relationship. So her husband had likely extended well past his leash by barking at us in comms. I was emotionally conflicted. I'd never had feelings for anyone prior to this experience, but I knew I couldn't treat Saint the same way I had before. It wouldn't stand. My savage's story came to a close as Mr. Pandaland was realized, released. I wrote him off as presumed dead on arrival, having gone to battle for the Alliance to save the light and never returned. But that story doesn't end there. In fact, contrary to what I've led you to believe formally, the story of my paladin savage also didn't quite end fully when he arrived presumed dead on arrival in Pandaria. As a novice role player at the time, much of Savage's story stayed true to the quests and the lore of Pandaria that most players plunged through initially. However, there were some minor alterations here and there concerning magical travel to Ironforge and Dalaran occasionally for various guild events and the likes. About this time, our guild had set up a forum where you could create journals for your characters. Should you want to roleplay out their innermost thoughts, but also to help other players get a better grasp of the characters that they were roleplaying with, flesh out your own tale in your own way. It was nice, it was clever, it was enjoyable, but it had faults. Savage, who had landed somewhere in the Jade Forest, took to chronicling his adventures and interactions, where the Hosen, <laughs> interactions there with the Hosen and the amazing flying serpents, which back then were the things I wanted most from the game. That sexy onyx serpent is still my most used mount to this day. Really? Really, though? Really? No shit. Really? Huh. Really? Though I yet sadly have never obtained the heavenly onyx ser cloud serpent. Don't you mount shame. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The Onyx Serpent. I don't know about that. But that doesn't stop me from taking a hit of the good old Copium. Someday it will grace my collection, I'm sure. Now I had taken to writing my character's journal. Several times a day, in fact. I very much enjoyed it. And I honestly only had time for the amount of writing I was doing because I was being homeschooled and spent all day sitting around the house while my father was at work and my mother was sleeping 16 odd hours a day. That got dark. Uh, okay. Uh, looking back, it's likely that being homeschooled and not having a social life outside of my two siblings was a deciding factor in my lack of character player separation at the time. But that is neither here nor there. Uh, we still go to school at 16, yeah? Yeah. You guys don't. <laughs> we st we do. <laughs> we go to like so we're 18. For anyone feeling bad about me. Oh, here we go. It's addressed. For anyone who feels bad about me, stop. Stop now. I assure you my mother and I are both quite fine now. I attended college for a while where I met my wife and eventually dropped out because I couldn't balance social life school and a full-time job. It was my own fault, but it helped me in the long run. I've since, with the help of experiences at college, learned proper social skills, and I'm leading a relatively happy life. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Solved. Back to Savage the Paladin. Savage had made his way into the Valley of the Four Winds, where I was solo roleplaying. That's right, solo roleplay. That he'd started to settle into a simpler life as a farmer with a local Pandaren. He was visited occasionally by his adopted sister Rainbow, who was the shy priestess from our from our from the previous story. Savage was tired of war, and at the time had decided to separate himself from the Crystal Slaves. 
He was through with it all. And a simple life was the thing to put his character to bed for me. And that's where I left him. As a lonely paladin who would live out his days in the valley as a simpleton, away from the debauchery and slavery that he had once known. Around this time, I was quite good friends with some of the players in the guild. And I was still a member of the Crystal Slaves, but I didn't have a character to play. As far as I could tell, Savage wasn't welcome to continue his story within the guild after my run-in with Saint and her husband. So I needed a clean slate. Fresh start. Something new. A mage. A mage sounds fun. I'll make it a sexy mage. I was a teenage boy and there was nothing sexier in my mind than a fiery mage girl who was also into girls, of course. <laughs> of course. I'm going to make myself a lesbian mage. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dream. That's the dream. Of course. It goes without saying, right? That's the plan. We're 16. We're socially awkward. We're going to be a lesbian mage. Easy for us, honestly. Easy game. And so there it began, my friends. The Tale of Angel Wing. Oh, brava on the name. Brava. I was leveling Angel Wing, and the class was really fun. I was enjoying the change of pace from playing a paladin. I was putting a lot of work into writing this character's juicy backstory and making it as interesting as I could. Some people from the guild had noticed the work I was putting into that character, and it brought with it a whole new slew of roleplay. Everyone wanted a slice of Angel Wing, and I was happy to accommodate. As I mentioned in our previous, uh, my previous... My previous stint in the guild, there was a rogue by the name of Noffel Hoffel. She was a quiet character. And often her roleplay was simply observing her surroundings, creeping from the, the trees like Yugiri. Much like my last character, she was in a roundabout way a bodyguard for Saint. Only Noffel Hoffel chose to do it from the shadows. She'd been bound to Saint for some unknown reason. And as time passed, I'd learn eventually that this character had dreams of getting away and doing great things with her life, away from the succubus. But she was nothing more than a servant to my former love interest. Which sort of made it that much more appealing. Why not try and get a fling going with Saint's favourite toy? It would be spiteful in story, I know, but... Lesbians, though. My young fixation slowly shifted from Saint to this new, more mysterious character. And in no small part because of the conversation that took place between Saint, her husband, and I in that private voice comms I wrote about. I'd started to move on unintentionally. And I wasn't at all emotionally conflicted anymore. I knew what I wanted. And she was dark, mysterious, an enigma. And I'm sure, and I don't know why I thought this, but it definitely intrigued me. Oh, bro. <laughs> I'm probably a little smelly under all that leather. You have a foot thing, don't you? You do. I can tell. We can all tell. You have a thing for feet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really seals in the juices. <laughs> Guilty. That's a foot thing. For sure, man. That's a foot thing. Hey, I'm not shaming. I'm not shaming. Everybody's got something. Everybody's got something. Now, my newest creation, Angel Wing, was, as you can probably imagine, a big flirt. She dressed provocatively, was outspoken, and had a temper at times. A real fire mage. I likened her appearance to that of Mary Jane from Spider-Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a sultry redhead with pink with pinkish tones to her hair. And I wish I still had it to share with you, but one of the guildies at the time, who was an artist, actually took the time to create a portrait of Angel Wing based on the description of her I'd written. I was proud of that image and used it as my profile picture on the forums when I wrote her journal. You not shared it? Scrolling. Ah, oh, boo, dude. You didn't share it. Oh, he hasn't got it anymore. Oh, fuck you, man. Fuck you, brother. <laughs> what the picture? What the pic? She had the pics, man. Yeah, he lost it. I see that now, Bex. Bummer, man. My role-playing lesbian life was taking off after a few guild events. An angel wing and Noffel Hoffel had started to spend a good deal of time together. But the queen had noticed. 
She didn't much care to see the two of us role-playing together. Jealousy often flared its angry nostrils when we were about. As I'd mentioned previously, Saint let herself bleed over to her character from real life, and she was a very possessive woman, IRL. She looked at the players in the guild as her personal playthings, that after all is what she had set up, as she wasn't happy to see her playthings playing without her, and had started showing at our guild events. In character, Saint was making remarks that were very strange for her character to make. She was using phrasing that her character wouldn't have used, and out-of-character information from our forums, journals, and the like. It was becoming more and more clear to the guild that she was spiraling, and perhaps approaching a breaking point, as her control was slipping. All the while, things were getting more complicated for me as well. I realized that I was yet again tying myself more and more to my character. And what had started as a very carefully separated from myself was at this point entirely intertwined again. I was emotionally confused and had developed feelings for the player behind Noffle Hoffle. I should point out here that it was no secret that our lovely, smelly, rogue lady Noffle Hoffle was a very kind man. He was married IRL and didn't see what was going on with me at first. I'd done a much better job this time round in masking my feelings, but now and again something would slip through as a little too out of character for Angel, and he'd check me to see if I was okay, certain about it. Most notably was our pre-Christmas event in the gardens of Dalaran. We'd all gathered together, and this night Angel showed up late to the show. I used invisibility often to make make it appear as though I teleported to wherever the effect wore off. And I thought I'd be clever and use it to see Angel besides Noffle Hoffle on the bench. Poof. Angel appeared in a shimmer of arcane magic and seemed to snap into reality right before everyone's eyes. It was a pretty grand entrance, no doubt. Noffle Hoffle wasn't amused, especially since she wasn't one for PDA. What's PDA? Player something actions, right? Player decided actions? Something like that? Something like that. Role players, what's PDA? I'm pretty sure it's that. Public display of affection? Oh, okay. Yeah, I was... Okay, all right. <laughs> Not what I thought then. I thought the teleporting but would be odd. But no, that's in character, right? Especially since she wasn't one for PDA. And to suddenly appear and snuggle right up to her was abnormal. And for sure, out of place. Novel Hovel wasn't having it. She stood up and left Angel sitting on that bench and stuck to her duties for the evening, looking after Saint, who was amused to see the turmoil brewing. Snarky comments were tossed about, both in character and out of character, and where Angel Wing was getting pissed, I was actually boiling over IRL. Emotions were running wild, and I was letting myself get carried far, far too away, for no real reason. After the event, Noffle Hoffle didn't show up to our in-character home in Ironforge and left without much of a word to Angel Wing or to me out of character either. I stayed up all night waiting for him to come home. Oh, I'm <laughs> so sad, dude. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> that's really sad. <laughs> this is making me so sad. I stayed up all night waiting for her to come home and thinking about what could be going on. What could have changed that drove us apart so abruptly? It just didn't make sense to my frantic, childish mind. In reality, nothing had changed. The player behind Nofflehoffle had gone to bed early with a headache. (coughs) It wasn't that even uncommon for him. And in character, I later found out that yes, Nofflehoffle would have come home that night. That said, it was... I've just logged off, bro. Oh, no. I can, I can, I've never really thought about the dangers of people becoming, like, more becoming their characters in a roleplay scenario rather than in the real world. That could be really dangerous, right? That must have some serious repercussions. Gotta have, man. It happens. I can imagine that happening. Yeah, I can imagine that happening and getting really kind of out of hand very quickly. It was entirely too late, and in my erratic state, I'd taken matters into my own psychotic hands. I went to the forums. I'd written several pages on the guild forums in Angel Wing's journal for everybody to see. 
Having gone back and reread it a few years ago, it was clear that I was spiraling out of control and frantic at the time of writing, and no doubt everyone saw it. I wrote about how Saints was clearly, uh, was clearly crazy, and manipulating everyone in the guild. How I'd noticed that Rainbow was out screwing around with a warrior in the Grand, which was also out of character information. And I wrote how I was convinced that Nuffelhoffel had gone off to ERP with Saint that night out of spite on me. It went on and on. Conspiracies, theories, it was horrible. I threw everyone under the bus. I crossed so many lines that there was no better way anyone could have described me at the time than to have called me psycho. I knew what was coming, so I left the guild myself. Made myself scarce. I didn't want to face the repercussions for my actions and deal with the consequences. Nuffelhoffel started playing less in the days that followed and would log off as soon as I'd get on. I had his battle swag, so it's clear that he was avoiding me. Eventually, I realized there wasn't anything left for me to do anymore since all of my friends had cut ties with me, and I placed no blame on them. Although there was a decent bit of craziness going on outside of myself, looking back, I know that I was the one to blame for losing all these friends. I did the honorable thing. I quit WoW. I didn't come back for many, many, many years. But when I did, when I did, Nuffle Hoffle was still on my battle tag list. That first day I returned to WoW and logged on, he whispered me. And we spoke for hours. I, of course, apologized for what I did. And I'll tell you now, he and I remained friends for a long time before he moved on to Guild Wars, Guild Wars 2. Presumably, to, and he removed everybody from his battle tag, presumably to close the book on World of Warcraft. I have got better now, as I mentioned earlier, and I have not roleplayed since then. Partially because I've got no one left to do it with, and partially because I prefer Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> it's a hell of a lot more fun, and it's less engrossing all the time. Thank you for taking the time to read and hear my story. And I warn you out there, if you feel... You are becoming so closely intertwined with your roleplay characters. Take a step back and remember, not real. <laughs> that was a roller coaster, man. From the real life to the game, dude. Oh, I've just had all these thoughts about people roleplaying and totally falling into the trap of, like, this is actually me now. That was a good story, but it was a little eye opening. Of like, I'm not actually Mike anymore. I am Preach, you know? I mean, I have to make that separation every goddamn day. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I have to do that every goddamn day. I'm Mike. I'm not Preach. <laughs> we can be Preach over here. But then when I go over there, that has to stop. That has to go away. Uh, yeah, people do use video games to escape. But sometimes escape... How far down that well do you go? How far down you down that well you go? It's often the case when I read roleplay stories, like of the really intense role players. It all seems so, and I imagine many of our audience here feel the same way. Is it feels so? Disconnected, I think is the word I look for. It feels so disconnected and almost. It, it, it feels almost made up because how good how could people be so involved in such a scenario that they you know they do the, the things irl they turn up at people's houses i mean we've had that more than enough times uh, of people you know we I, I can't connect to that mindset it almost feels fake and like completely made up uh but it's not <laughs> you know that's the scary thing it's not my girlfriend called me donkey last night and i kind of liked it uh i mean <laughs> if my wife called me preach and she has done um, to mock me. I would not like that at all. RP is so fun. Over there. <laughs> I can't call my husband August. I just can't. I bet you did when you first met though, right? Yeah, escapism and reality, you know? Esca especially if you give your... I, I, can, I can totally see it, especially if you're a bit downtrodden and socially awkward that you create this fantastical Chad character uh, that does all the things you want to do in the real world, but you can't. And then that's obviously much more fun to play than go outside and sort things out there. It's also much easier to do, which is the general go-to. It's much easier things. Call me by my gamer tag, baby. No way, man. I don't have pet names, no. <laughs> you can always call me Captain Gimp. My husband and I have the same first name, so we actually call him by a character for seven years now. You married somebody who has the same first name as you? That's mental. How did you do that? That's crazy. 
That's a that's an out, right? I mean, how could you? That's mental. Can't you shorten one or nothing? How do you friends? On oh, accident, but it's the best decision I've made. You accidentally married somebody with the same first name as you? How did you accidentally get married? Like a Vegas thing? Were you hammered? And then the next day you found out you'd married someone with the same name? Did you slip and fall? I want that story. That's the story I want. I want that story. I need the details there. Aaron and Erin. Aaron and Erin's not the same. It would be... Ashley would be one that's very similar. That's quite common. Wait, that's never happened to you? No, I've married my wife twice now. Both times, uh, it was on purpose. Did I do it wrong? Hmm. Yeah, there was people there and all sorts. It was very scheduled now I think about it. Alex and Alex. I don't think I could cope with that. If I was called Emma, I couldn't marry Emma. Did you ask her first name? Yeah, it was one of the first things I knew about her. And if she was called Mike, I couldn't marry her either. Alex and Alex. So you go by gamer tags. Interesting. One of you's not called like Butt Slayer 34, right? Or something like that. Because that would be real strange. This is Alex and this is Butt Slayer 34. You know? <coughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Congratulations to you both. Anyway. <laughs> Milf bummer. <laughs> you couldn't marry Nups? No, I can't. No. I, the name thing, that would drive me mad. Uh, that, that would drive me crazy. Maybe if you made your, maybe if you made your game a name like a normal name. You're lucky we didn't meet in our early 2000s. We have a bunch of X's in our name. Yeah, Alex X, 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 12. That would be crazy. That would be crazy. Ooh, Alexis. I like the name Alexis. That's good shit. Uh, all right. That's us for this week. We might be here tomorrow with Pokemon. We're starting Pokemon. We've just finished Heaven's Ward. We're going to take, a, obviously, a brief don't burn out break on Final Fantasy. In which case, we're going to be doing Pokemon, where I will be enslaving all of you. You will become my crystal slaves. Uh, so be prepared to have uh, a lot of Pokemon named after you. And then banished to the nether realm of the void. Never to be seen again. <laughs> You're already gaming? Oh, Crusher, man. Is it good, Crusher? Is it good? Are we happy? Are we happy, boys? Are we happy? I am going to be social tonight. My wife is making me go out and uh, entertain her friends. I have to be. I have to be good. Uh, so yeah, it should be good. It's good so far. Awesome, awesome. So a free shalana. It might either be tomorrow or Monday. We'll see it uh, when it happens. Yes, I'm out being social. I have to go to a cocktail bar tonight. Hoo hoo, cocktail bar uh, and have dinner and stuff with. Uh, it's a couple's night. <laughs> I'd rather play Pokemon and stream, uh, but I'm sure it'll be fine. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for an extraordinary week. Thank you for the, the welcome I received to Final Fantasy XIV's Stormblood today. It was extraordinary. Absolutely extraordinary. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. It's been super amazing. You guys have been awesome. I'm going to uh, see you as soon as I can. But enjoy your weekend if I don't see you, okay? Do something cool with it. I'll see you as soon as possible. Bye, everybody. <laughs>